So this is almost a complete skeleton of a hominin uh, who lived in Africa about 1.6 million years ago, a little bit more. And um, th this is not the real skeleton, this is a uh, cast of the skeleton that's uh, kept in uh, Nairobi, in, in Kenya. And, and this individual uh, had an incredible uh, importance, not just for the understanding of these very species of hominids, but in general for the understanding of, of human evolution. It belongs to a group of fossil hominins that we call Homo erectus. And Homo erectus um, was an incredibly successful model of hominin. It's the first uh, species that has a very large geographical extension. It, it originated in Africa and expanded into Asia and Europe until the middle latitudes. And it's the first case where, uh, in human evolution when one species basically replaced all the others. And this is, is somehow uh, uh, forecasting what's going to happen at a larger scale with modern humans much later. The Homo erectus existed for uh, more than a million uh, years and a half. And um, it, it's, it's really an interesting uh, specimen, this one, because it, 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 learn, it, it teaches a, a lot about what, what, what humans are somehow. And um, in many aspects, this Homo erectus is close to us. Uh, in terms of body proportion, in terms of locomotion. Uh, and it, it was considered initially like almost a, a human, almost achieved, just with a smaller brain case and a bigger dentition. But then when people start working onto this material with, um, I would say, more uh, details uh, addressed and new techniques and, and, and we have worked in my department on this specimen also and, and many others have. Uh, what, what, uh, what appeared and that was really surprising is that this hominin that in many aspects looked like us is also very different in some other aspects, especially uh, regarding uh, growth and development. Uh, this individual was not adult when he died. Uh, he was initially considered like an adolescent, but it was always difficult to establish his, his real age. Uh, if you look at the skeletal development or the dental eruption or other features, you find ages that are a bit, I would say, varied. Um, the usual estimate was something around 12 years old at death. And he, he was about my size when he died, a little bit smaller, but not much. And w what happened in particular is that when people started looking at dental microstructures to address the, 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 the calendar age of individual at death, so counting uh, structures of accretion inside the enamel and the dentin, uh, basically having a way to count days, like a little bit like to count years within a, 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 a piece of, of a tree. Uh, what, what was proven with this individual is likely died much younger than 12 years old, maybe something like 8 years old. And so 8 years old with a size like that it's something, of course, that is unknown in, the, in, in modern humans. Um, not, it's not just a matter of size, it's a matter of um, a pattern of development of different parts of the, of the organism. And so to make it simple, I would say this is a human that looks like a human in many aspects, but has a growth pattern that's closer to what we have, say, in, in chimpanzees. For example, and what what made what made them extinct? What happened? Oh, what made them extinct? Uh, well, they did not got extinct, in fact, completely, because we are the descendants of of Homo erectus, 
And so uh, what happened after this expansion of Homo erectus over a large portion of the old world is that in different parts of the world, there was a, a diversification of this uh, local Homo erectus. Uh, one very extreme example is the, the hobbit from Flores, this very small creature uh, that we think is a, a local descendant of Homo erectus in islands with developing a uh, what we call insular dwarfism uh, with a reduction of the brain size and many uh, strange features. Uh, but in other parts of the world, there was also a, a, a differentiation. So we became fourth out of the Homo erectus? Yeah, or through, we, we came from Homo erectus through other hominins. Uh, there is, in, in the, let's say, around 600, 800,000 years ago, we moved from this kind of forms in Africa to um, hominins with larger brains. They continue to have a very uh, strong masticatory system, but they have a brain case that is more uh, derived somehow. And, and this group uh, maybe uh, experienced another out of Africa uh, movement. And then we have in Europe the uh, emergence of Neanderthals, uh, in Asia, what we call Denisovans, and in, in Africa, we are going to have the first representatives of our own species, Homo sapiens. And it's these Homo sapiens from Africa uh, who eventually will uh, give birth to what we call modern humans. And these modern humans, again, are going to expand outside of Africa uh, and not just in places where Neanderthals, Denisovans or Hobbits lived, but uh, much further. <laughs> Uh, moving into Australia, moving into the higher latitudes of Eurasia, eventually moving into Americas and invading the whole planet, and even other uh, uh, maybe um, 